Next, I want to introduce uh, Russ Baker. He is the founder of the Real News Project. Russ? Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I've got quite a bit of laryngitis here. I'll try to talk. I've got laryngitis. <laughs> okay. Uh, I uh, was just uh, reading something uh, today. I thought it was a very good analysis by a friend of mine, Bob Dreyfus, who writes for TomPain.com. Some of you know may, may know his excellent work on Iraq. And he was talking about the um, uh, the doubts within the military about whether uh, 20,000 troops, what, what the uh, consequences of that was going to be. And There's no mic. Th this is only for recording purposes. The microphone doesn't amplify, okay. and he right. has laryngitis, so just please be as quiet as you can. Uh, I'll come over here. Is this any better? Yes. Okay. Anyway, uh, uh, so I was struck by this discussion of whether 100,000 or 20,000 or less was necessary, and I thought, boy, you know, what kind of a, of a wonderland are we in? You know, uh, uh, I think one of the problems about uh, being a reporter, and I speak as somebody who's worked in the mainstream and alternative media uh, for my entire career, is that you're, you're under a tremendous amount of pressure. And I want to talk about this because you're all media activists, and I, I think you want to figure out not just what the problem is, but what, what can be done about it. And I, I would like to ask you to be a little bit sympathetic with people who are in the media, because one of the difficulties is these people do know what's going on. Most of them do know what's going on. They are part of an apparatus that makes it difficult to tell what is going on. And one of the difficulties is you're on this 24-hour news cycle, and you're supposed to report what happened that day. There really is no basis for doing uh, context, uh, and so we don't get any context. Um, and one of the problems that I have is that all of this discussion about what should be done today or tomorrow and so on doesn't matter because the only real question is, why were we ever there in the first place? And unless that is discussed every single day, we're not going to be having the right discussion. So I, I just want to tell a little quick story. Uh, back in 2004, I did a, a, a story where I interviewed uh, a guy named Mickey Herskowitz. Mickey Herskowitz was uh, contracted with George W. Bush to work together and write a book, which became known as A Charge to Keep. It was George Bush's campaign uh, biography, if you will. And uh, I interviewed Mickey. He had never given a public interview before. And I asked him, tell me what happened with Bush, with the book. And Mickey said, you know, Back in 99, I said to him, what do you want to do when, when you're going to be president? Uh, we got to put that in the book. And he said, well, what, well, what else do you want to talk about? He said, well, w we could talk about what you've done in the past. And he said, well, I really haven't done much. There isn't much to put in there. So he said, all right, let's talk about what I'm going to do. So he said, well, what are you going to do? And he said, you know, talk to Carl about that. And then he said, well, then Mickey said to him, well, give me something to work with. He said, well, I'll tell you one thing I'm going to do. He said, if I get a chance, I'm not going to do what my dad did. If I get a chance, I'm going to go into Iraq, and I'm going to go all the way. And Mickey asked him about that, and he said, you know, one of the important things was you want to have political capital. And he said, uh, we learned from Margaret Thatcher in the Falklands invasion that if you, uh, if you have a successful war, people like that. And they see you as commander in chief, and you build up this kind of uh, aura with the public, and that this is crucial to really carrying out your agenda. Now, we thought that was an important story. David Swanson, to his credit, did try to get that story out. Helen Thomas was very, very kind to mention it in a column, unfortunately, the week after the 2004 election. We got it out about a month before. The mainstream media would not run the story. They told me they thought it was an important story, but they were nervous. They were afraid that they would be tarred as being behind a kind of an October surprise, a last-minute dirty trick. They said to me, do you have a tape of this? I said, I do have a tape of Mickey telling me this. They said, no, no, do you have a tape of George Bush <laughs> telling him? And I said, Mickey Herskowitz has written 30 books. I mean, he's written other books with Michael Deaver, Reagan administration people. He's a friend of the Bush family. Why is that not enough? They said, in this climate, it's not enough. I want to urge all of you to try to find a way to help the mainstream media tell their story. Now, one way you can do it is this. Okay, is, I've, got, I've got one minute left, is to contextualize stuff. Now, the way you can do that is uh, people are overwhelmed, they're too busy. Give them, send them emails, and give them very quick talking points of things, facts, and things they ought to consider. I get a lot of email from people. A lot of it is sort of random or vitriolic. A few people every day send me things that are really, really clear with attached memos and so on, and they lay out their points. And I'll tell you, it really affects me. And I know I speak a lot for a lot of people, New York Times columnists and so on, and it affects them. One last thing I just want to say, we are the Real News Project. We are not another organization here using a very similar name. Everybody seems to be confused. I apologize. We registered that name. We're called 
realnews.org, the Real News Project. The other group rebranded because they thought it was a better name. I'm sorry about that. Happy to talk to any of you. Thank you for being here.